He is now being treated for serious mental health problems. But a week ago, Hugh Edwards didn't know what was about to hit him and was talking to this Times journalist about his future. I had no idea, no sense from that conversation that he was in any sort of trouble at all. And I'm pretty convinced that he didn't either have, have any inkling. This was why I was so astonished when his name came out over the weekend, not publicly, of course, but within journalistic circles, because it didn't add up. The, the man I'd just had lunch with was, was not the man being described in, in these allegations. But it's emerged even before the Sun articles. BBC journalists had been looking into allegations against their own presenter, leading to Newsnight reporting allegations from BBC staff that Hugh Edwards had abused his power, sending inappropriate messages. Is it legitimate to investigate the private life of somebody with a high public profile? I mean, as late as last night, BBC Newsnight was running new allegations against Hugh Edwards even after the announcement that he was in hospital. So I don't think it's for broadcasters to necessarily point the finger at newspapers or vice versa. I think all of journalism has to ask itself some quite awkward questions. Media organisations are always asking themselves not just what their audiences want to know, but what they have a right to know and what's private. Failures within a publicly funded organisation fall into the right to know category. But the behaviour of one of its top stars, well, that depends on the allegations. The most significant journalist uh, on the BBC and probably in the country, who was uh, had one public image, which is of a, a happily married man with children with a strong church background. He was secretly associating with young people through dating websites. But even if proven true, that's not what caused the storm. Questions for the Sun newspaper are when it splashed this story on Saturday, had the alleged victim already told them it was untrue? The claims were repeated on Sunday, even though his lawyer says he denied it on Friday. What evidence did reporters have to back the parents' assertion that the presenter paid for explicit photos? And then publish the parents' claim the BBC had lied about their knowledge of this. The Sun printed other allegations, but now say it wasn't claiming criminality, but that their story was in the public interest. If the young person before publication did deny that it happened, um, and they didn't reflect that in their article, then they wouldn't be able to, it's likely, rely on the public interest offence. But The Sun's journalism has left the BBC investigating its highest profile newsreader, and whether its own procedures helped cause this crisis. Jason Farrell, Sky News.